To trade in this market, you've got to be tough. And to be a day trader, you've got to be the toughest. Hey folks, I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is Wednesday, September 13th. Now tomorrow being September 14th, Thursday, I've got a live streaming event. It's not a special occasion. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. When the bell's going off, <laughs> me and Taylor are going on. Taylor's my lovely co-host. She was gone last week. She was on her honeymoon. Let's give her a break. She should be back this week. Taylor and I will be there for about an hour, and we're there for one reason, to talk to investors about stocks they're interested in. I share hot stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share hot stocks with me. Hint, hint. So we're there for an hour. I go over the information. She goes over the charts. And between the two of us, she'll get an opinion, whatever it's worth. Now, if you really want to get your ticker looked at, get it in there early. Sometimes I talk too much and we don't get to all the tickers. And you can get it in before four. A placeholder goes up much earlier in the day, about 2.30, maybe even earlier. And you can drop your ticker in the comments. I'll get to see it early. So that'll give me a head start on looking at your stock. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. Now, in this show, what I like to do is go hunting for stocks under 5 bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. I like to call these hot penny stocks. And when I look for hot penny stocks, I do it by looking at the charts first. I want to see a hot chart. Hot news is important, but if a hot piece of news hits a cold chart, it normally falls flat on its face. So I go to the charts, I look for a lot of volume coming in, or maybe the price is sneaking up underneath a strong SMA and about ready to break out. Well, when I find one of those charts, then I go looking at the news and the press releases, looking for a catalyst. If I find one, voila, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you every day. And I got three I want to share with you right now. First one we are going to take a look at is a cannabis company. This is ticker STMH, STEM Holdings, Inc. This is an American company working in America. Another one. How about that? Her chart just broke out. It was an atypical breakout chart. And yesterday it was under the 200. Today it is above it. So she did not start running on the DEA news of them Hopefully, maybe rescheduling cannabis from Schedule 1 down to Schedule 3 had nothing to do with that. She's just running on her own merits right now. Now, the funny thing is, and you may laugh at this, she has no current news. Matter of fact, the catalyst I am looking at is from January. That was their last piece of news, but there was some really big potent pieces of information in there, which may be coming into play in the background, even though they haven't publicized anything. That's why we're looking at it. So STMH, she finished the day at almost two cents, 1.8 cents. She finished the day just a hair under, well, over 0.2%. Uh, <laughs> She's on the middle tier of the OTC. The QB, this is the better tier. That's what we like to call it because it's better than the pinks. We're actually getting financials that are audited. You don't get that with the pinks. They just give you numbers and what do we know what they mean. CPAs look at these. So they give us accounting. They tell us the fundamentals of the company. Is it in good shape or bad shape? That's a good thing. Plus, they've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. That's validated information. And it's being validated by an unbiased third party. The OTC markets. So they've got validated numbers and validated information. Looking really good. And they're penny stock exempt. I always love seeing this. This tells me they are not a startup company that I have to worry about. The literal definition says they've been in business for three to five years, had millions of dollars of revenues or assets during that time period, and kept up with their financials. They've proven they're responsible. They've shown us they're at work making money. That's what you want to see. So everything looks lovely with this TMH. So what do they say here about the company? Well, they tell us that STEM Holdings, Inc. is a Nevada corporation incorporated on June 7th, 2016 and headquartered in Boca Raton, Florida. The company is a leading vertically integrated cannabis company. Right there, that tells you everything that they do. They do everything. From start to finish, they handle their product. 
In this case, it would be seed to sale or seed to shelf. They cultivate it, they harvest it, process it, package it, brand it, and then they sell it. They do it all. And to give you a little idea of the size of their operation and what they're doing, they are in three states. Uh, they were in three states, Massachusetts, Oregon, and Nevada. I believe they have backed out of Massachusetts, but as you're going to see in the news, they're getting a foothold into California right now. So you've got one, two, three, four, five dispensaries in Oregon and one in Nevada. But that one in Nevada is huge. That is 4,600 square feet for a storefront for cannabis. This isn't Planet 13. I'm sure they're using the back half of this for something else. We can also see that they are growing their own marijuana. And they've got just as many cultivation sites as they have dispensaries. One, two, three, four, five of them in uh, Oregon and one in Nevada. And taking a look at their brands. They have TJ's Gardens Cultivation brand. This is considered the premium brand of the Pacific Northwest. TJ's Gardens is committed to growing perfect marijuana. That's, that's a big statement. TJ's has won numerous awards, 30 plus awards at the High Times Cannabis Cup, the Dope Cup events, and the Northwest Cannabis Classic competitions. They're winning awards. They've got some good stuff. Then there is Yerba Buena. Yerba Buena is the one and only cannabis farm in the country to hold both clean green and certified kind responsible agricultural credentials. And they sell the flower and the vapes. They may have other stuff too. Then they've got Travis X. James. It says top of the line Primo Cannabis. And that's what I noticed when I looking at their products. They don't have any bottom of the line. No white label products. Then they have what they call Doseology. This is CBD hemp brand. Uh, these are topicals. CBD, I don't think there's any THC. I think it's all CBD, CBGs, topicals that you can use on your eyes and your skin and things like that. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Not huge numbers, but we do have about a 150% increase, jumping from 56,000 shares, definitely under the radar, up to 131,000 shares. Share structure for the company. Uh, looks average across the board. 280 million is our outstanding share count. They say the insiders own 83 million of the shares. That's a nice hold. And that leaves us with about twice that many, uh, just under 200 million shares. It's not a great float. It's not the worst we've seen, but it's a high float. Let's check out those financials. Oh, those are sweet. Big jumps. Back in 2019, she only had $2.5 million. We know that's millions, right? Because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers here. She jumped from 2.5 in a year up to 14 million. The next year, 2021, she did 21 million. And then she took a dip here in 2022, going down to 16.5 million. Now, I noticed the end of her fiscal year is September. We're in September right now. So when this month ends, they will be due an annual report. I'd be interested to see that one. Looking at her quarterly, well, it's been steady. Over the last year, every single quarter, she's roughly doing about $4 million. Although these last two quarters, she did drop down to $3.8 million. But what's important to take notice of here is their profit margins are increasing, even though their revenues aren't. The last three quarters, even though the revenues are virtually the same, the profits have gone from 53000 to just over half a million to just over a million. So whatever they're doing now is definitely working. Taking a look at those disclosures. Oh, right. We've got an untimely Form 4. <laughs> Form 4s are filed when the insiders, the management, acquire or dispose of shares of the company's stock. And we're really most interested when they buy them or sell them. And this is a purchase, a nice one, but it isn't current. I don't know why they brought it out now, but we can still learn a little bit here. This is Ray Rahiv, or is it Rye? Let's call him Ray. Ray Raheev is a director in the company, and he has made some purchases. This is actually a mini history of his purchases. Three of these were last year, in July, September, and December. He purchased 2.1 million of them for three cents. 
Then he had two small purchases for $162,000 each at two cents each. Then the price drops to a penny. Good time to average down, Ray. Oh, the heck with averaging down. I'm going to dominate my hold with this purchase. He bought 5 million shares, which is really smart because what happens when you go from one to two, the very next digit, you've doubled. That's 100% gains just like that from 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. As soon as it hits two, you have doubled your money just that fast. And he now has, let me oak that again. Like I said, he did have about 2.8. 5 million shares. He now has roughly 7.5 million shares. So it isn't a current buy, but it's an interesting buy. And finally, that news. Now, as I said, there is no current news. The most current piece of news came out January 31st of this year. Now, it was back in April that they sold their license for the Massachusetts sales. You can't sell cannabis without a license. So they are out of Massachusetts, like I said. But I also said they were getting into California, and that's what this news press is all about. Now, this is old. It came out January 31st. Stem Holdings and Headwaters signed term sheet for a merger agreement. 2022 consolidated business revenues, $75 million. They're saying between the two companies, they did $75 million worth of business last year. Well, we just saw the revenues last year for this company, 16.5 million. That leaves roughly 59 million that the other company did. This sounds like a pretty sweet merger to me. We've also got a forecast of revenues. 2023 consolidated forecasted revenues of $100 million. Now, we haven't had any information here recently. That's why I want to get an annual report. That's going to tell us a lot since they're not putting out news presses. But let's see what we can learn from this one. STEM Holdings Inc. is pleased to announce that it has executed a term sheet for a proposed merger with Headwaters. Pursuant to the term sheet, the transaction will result in a reverse takeover of the company. The bigger company is going to be the dominant one. STEM is going to take a back seat. Over the past 12 months, STEM has worked tirelessly to find the right company to transact a business combination with. We could not be more excited about combining forces with Headwaters. Currently, Headwaters is located in California and is a leading greenhouse, cultivator, wholesale, and distributor with an emergent brand called Mr. Zips. Now, they've been around for about a decade, and their home is in Humboldt County. Now, if you're not familiar with Humboldt County, you probably don't smoke a lot of cannabis. This is considered to be one of the best places to get your marijuana, the best cannabis is coming out of Humboldt. That's what they say. And when I lived there and tried it, well, let's just say I have no complaints. So let's get a little information here about the company that they are merging with. They operate four greenhouses in Capernaturia, totaling over 23 acres of production and nursery canopy. They sell cannabis bulk style. They don't put it into smaller packages. They sell huge amounts to other companies and let them package it up. They have agricultural services. They sell clones to companies, pre-born babies. All you got to do is keep them alive and let them grow. Branded products. They develop and sell CPG products into licensed retail channels. They have a technology service, proprietary IP for cultivation and post-harvest processing. And this is very impressive. They tell us here that they sold 230,000 pounds of bulk cannabis and 1,700,000 clones in 2021. Folks, that is a lot of cannabis and a lot of clones. They are producing a ton of marijuana, but they are dispersing that to other companies who are putting it to use. That's who STEM is merging with. STEM has their dispensary, STEM has their brands, and this company has bought cannabis that they're going to be able to put to use. And they are in California. They've got a license there. So now STEM is going to be probably, I'm presuming, be able to move in to California on their license. Whew, I'm liking it. Let's go take a look at this chart. As always, we are going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get when you sign up at TD Ameritrade. And that don't cost you nothing either. So we are looking at STMH STEM Holdings. This is a six-month, four-hour view. 
We have got a high on January 31st, the day that news press came out, the one we were just reading. She jumped here from two cents up to four cents. You got ourselves a 100% gain and then she fell down very quickly back underneath the 200. And she's been falling ever since without any news to react to. She hit a low here at the end of July at double zero, double seven. Now she is showing a lot of eagerness. Look at all of these pokes through the 200. Now it's still at an incline, so I don't expect her to jump through. Right around here, it started to go flat, right? It is definitely starting to turn a little. Well, she's been showing she wanted to jump. She just needed this to get flatter. And right there, she took off, pushed herself over the 200, and really started jumping once she got on top. You can see the volume has been increasing all along the way, and our SMAs are lined up beautifully. She started off down here at just under a penny, and she hit a high here of two and a half cents. So that's 250% gain in that little run right there. Oscillators are very strong. Our PPO and our MACD are both climbing. PPO is percentage price oscillator. It's a lot like the MACD. You read them the same. MACD uses the full price. A percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. And our RSI is at 64 right now. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So, as I said, she wasn't doing much but showing a little bit of interest. Every now and then, she'd poke over that 200, and then she decided to break over it. Once she got up there, she just bounced on it a few times and then took off. Test, test, test. Is this strong enough to hold me up? And boom, she decided it was, and she launched. So, for the last three days, she has seriously been climbing. She started here at about 1.2 cents. She has had a dip today. She went up to 2.5 cents, came down to about 1.8 cents, and that's where we're sitting right now. We are underneath the nine day SMA. I'm not crazy about that. You can't climb till you're on top of the nine. Oscillators, they were very strong, but that dip right there has pulled everything down a little bit, except the RSI, that came down a lot of bit. Looking at that five day, five minute. Well, that looks a little better. Is that five days of trading? The 12th? No, this is only two days for whatever reason. We got a low here of 1.5 cents and then 2.5 cents. Climbing all the way up, bouncing on the 20. We've only got a 50 as our dominant SMA here. Our oscillators, again, the fall at the end of the day has brought everything down, but I think something's coming. First off, we do have an annual report. I realize that is probably over a month away. But there could be a news press. I know that's speculation too. But it has been a long time since we've heard from this company. And it looks like they've tweaked their revenues in some way. Not that the revenues have gone up, but the profit margins have. Is that because they're able to get cannabis at a better price now from their partner? Hey, there's a thought. So STMH, she is breaking out right now. There is no doubt about that. Look at the four hour chart. You can see she has gone over and she's taking momentum. I'd be putting it on my watch list. Our next ticker, it's a busy B. This company has made a lot of acquisitions. They're doing business with a lot of companies and they are way undervalued. They just had huge news today that made the chart explode. They did have a big rip going above the 200 and it came back down and with the news today, she launched again. There's a lot of volume there and the technicals are very strong. So I'm thinking now wouldn't be a bad time to look at iQuestal again. This is IQST. iQuestal finished today at 24 cents with just a little over 23% gains. Now she's on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. They call it the best tier because you get all the information about the company and you get audited financials. Plus we have every green tick you could ask for over here. Verified profile, transfer agent verified, and that penny stock exempt. Plus they've got independent directors listed here. Now the only reason I know that you need to list independent directors here is when you have plans to uplist. Now, I haven't read anything, but it sure makes sense to me. So, what is iQuesto all about? Well, there's a lot of information there I could read, and it's pretty accurate, but I'm going to come on over here to a press release. It just seems a little easier, and I can give you better pictures. iQuesto, they are a U.S.-based, multinational, publicly listed company preparing for an uplist to the NASDAQ. 
They are forecasting $120 million for 2023. Keep that in mind. iQuesto's mission is to serve basic human needs in today's modern world by making the necessary tools accessible to everybody, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, social economic status, or even identity. iQuesto recognizes that in today's modern world, the pursuit of human hierarchy of needs is marginalized without access to ubiquitous communications, the freedom of virtual banking, complete affordable mobility, and information and content. iQuesto has four business divisions. The Enhanced Telecommunication Service. This includes all the stuff we got going on right now. Voice over internet protocol, messaging, international fiber optic, proprietary internet of things, and proprietary mobile portability blockchain platform. They have a fintech division which provides people top-up services, MasterCard and a debit card, a U.S. bank account without needing a social security number, and a mobile app to make it all work. They are also involved with electric vehicles. They're offering electric motorcycles, and they plan to launch mid-size speed cars. And finally, of course, the Artificial Intelligence Enhanced Metaverse Division. And they're making a lot of headway here, folks. This includes an enriched and immersive white label proprietary AI enhanced metaverse platform to access products, services, content, entertainment, information, customer support, and more in a virtual 3D interface. White label. That means this is going to be a product that they're going to sell to other people who can resell it to other people. And that's how you can make a lot of money. iQuesto has completed 10 acquisitions since June 2018 and continues to develop an active pipeline of potential future acquisitions. As I said, this company is busy. I don't know how many companies they're actually dealing with. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's a nice jump. We got about uh, five times her normal volume, going from roughly a half a million to almost 200. I guess that would be four times. Thank you very much. Share structure for the company. Outstanding share count, about 168 million. Insiders don't have much, 6.7 million, leaving a float of about 161 million if those numbers are right. Financials for iQuest. Let's see what you got going on here. They're growing steadily. 2019, they were at 18 million, jumping to 44, 64, and 93. They are making a profit, but boy, there's not very much there for all the work they're doing. Quarterly, 23, 21, they took a jump. Oh, I like that. The last quarterly financial, they jumped about uh, 24 to 32. Why is my math slow today? <laughs> They jumped 8 million, which is bigger than they've done for a whole year. So things are looking better. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. All right, in the bank, the company has $1.3 million, total assets 12 million, and half of that in liabilities, 6 million. So the company's got good revenues that are growing, and they've got stronger assets than liabilities. Let's take a look at those disclosures. We've got one 8K here that came out today. This actually has to do with their financials, but we can get the financial information from a news press that just came out. Now, I've gone back here to May. All of this news is primarily about how much money they're making. It is just exploding. Back in May, Q1 revenue increases to over $24 million with 151% gross margin increase. Then here in July... Questo launches proprietary AI-backed Metaverse app into the $900 billion market. The company reports $57.5 million revenue on track to achieve $120 million annual forecast. And the last one here, 9.6. iQuesto announces $83 million year-to-date revenue besting forecasted rate. And then the news I really want to share with you iQuesto signs a $10 million term sheet with LDA Capital to back NASDAQ Uplist plan. Now, they give us a lot of good information in here. This came out today. 
iQuesto today announced they are executing a term sheet with LDA Capital for $10 million as part of iQuesto's plan to uplist onto the NASDAQ stock market. The company reported $93.2 million in revenue last year and is on track to meet or exceed its $120 million 2023 revenue forecast. As stated in the term sheet, the $10 million investment is expected in two parts. In advance of the NASDAQ uplisting, the first $5 million is expected to be placed in exchange for a 24-month bond. iQuesto's plan for the second $5 million is to expand its core telecommunications business by completing another acquisition that is expected to add disruptive innovation and positive financial fundamentals to include revenue with positive net income. The second $5 million is expected to be placed in exchange for a second $5 million bond available following a successful uplisting to the NASDAQ. Now, I find this next part very interesting. Management believes the company is currently undervalued and that the partnership with LDA Capital may bring new market-wide visibility that in turn has the potential to elevate iQuesto's market cap to be more in line with the company's underlying value. In other words, he's saying get the price of the stock up. Now to that end, if the investment is realized and an acquisition is accomplished, iQuesto Management believes that its share price has the potential to organically achieve the minimum price, $3, necessary to uplist to the NASDAQ. They are basically saying you don't have to worry about a reverse split. That's not part of our considerations. We know what we got. We know what we're worth and we should be up there. And if we can get that out there, the price should rise. iQuesto and LDA Capital are beginning a 30-day due diligence engagement as the first step towards an anticipated definitive investment agreement. So there's your window, 30 days before we probably get another piece of news. I'm not saying we won't, but that's the deadline that they're working on. So you've got... $5 million that they're going to use to help get this company onto the NASDAQ and then another $5 million they get when they get on the NASDAQ. I'm sure they're motivated to get that money. And right now, <laughs> we're at $0.24. Cents. And the management believes that organically, naturally, without a reverse split, we can get the price to 3 bucks. Let's go take a look at this chart. We are now looking at iQuesto, ticker IQST. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Our low bubble hit in June. That was just a little over eight cents, and we hit our high of 3.3 cents at the end of July. Now, you can see she had a big rip here off of this low bubble. She tapped the 200, came back down, landed on her 50, nice strong support, and she jumped off of that. Boy, was that a beautiful bounce. She went from 10 cents up to 33 cents in, I don't know, 10 days there. You're looking at 300% uh, gains, minimum. Then we've got the murder. You see that big M right there, full size, full dip right there. When you see a big M, you normally see a big drop following it see a big W for winner, you see a big rip come after it. Well, we had a huge drop going all the way back down to the 200, which is where I said she hit and bounced, and that's what's going on right now. The volume is starting to pick up right with the climb of our price. Price got over that 50, and she just launched off of it. She tagged the 50 and took off. And she is currently at 24 cents, which puts her way up here above every single SMA. All of our oscillators are pushing up. Our RSI was in the overbought, but right now it is close. It's at 69.1. Our 20-day, one-hour view. Wow, look at that 200. Coming down hard, really hard. Price is way down here, being pushed. Hitting this low, working up very slowly. Crossing the 50. See how small these price bars are and how bigger they've gotten once she got over the 50. And how much bigger they get when she got over the 200. This is the sort of thing we expect as she's crossing SMAs. She jumped off of her 20 most of the time here. Boink, boink boink and launched. Now she is way up there. She comes back down. We would expect her to hit the 20. Our 50-day SMA is just about ready to cross the 200. 
that's going to give us a golden cross. That is normally a power sign. It's one of the strongest technicals on the chart. So when you see that happening, and it looks like it's going to happen tomorrow, you normally get a nice push on the price. Looking at our one hour oscillators, they are very strong. PPO and MACD are pushing up simultaneously, and we are riding strong at 69 on our RSI. Five day, five minute, that's a beautiful chart. Low bubble is in this corner of 16 cents, high bubble in this corner of 24 cents. You got a 30% gain right there. She is on top of her 50, paying heed to it. When she comes down, she smacks it. Doesn't even come underneath it, does she? Smacks it and she bounces off of it. She took a big bounce here. She's come down and right now she is on the 50. She looks like she's wrestling with it. She's come down and back up. I think she has a good chance of staying up there. What do our oscillators say? Oh, see how close we had to get? There is a bounce happening at this very moment. We can see our MACD is just turned direction and our RSI is climbing from 43 up to 52. So she is in the midst of turning down, but it looks like she wants to come back up. And they've got lots going on. They're going to uplist. How exciting is that? They're supposed to get their first $5 million in the next 30 days if things work right. Eh, somewhere like that. So she is one to watch. How far is she going to run right now on that catalyst? I don't know. But she's worth putting on your watch list. IQST. You're not going to believe this, but our next stock, it is a USA lithium mining company. This is Surge Battery Meadows, ticker N-I-L-I-F. Now, I just covered another U.S. lithium mining company a few days ago, uh, EVKRF. So, I'm real familiar with what's going on here. But first, let's talk about the chart because that's what caught my attention to this stock. It's hot. She's been in an uptrend since she hit a low bubble in March. She's been climbing ever since, bouncing in this channel. Well, in the last week, she picked up momentum, broke out of the channel, and now she's surging. Now, what's most interesting is she's not making any revenues, but that's not unusual. Fact of the matter is, out of all the lithium mining companies in America, none of them are making revenues right now, except for one, ALB. Stock price is about 180 bucks a share right now, and their mine is Silver Peak. It's been around for about 100 years. But all these newer companies, they're not getting to mine because there's just a lot of conflicts right now. With the consumers, you got a lot of cases in the courts about animals and plants being hurt, uh, misuse of the land and water, things like that. And then to complicate things, you have federal agencies actually arguing over who can use the land for what. So we're not getting anywhere right now. So all of these lithium companies are in the same boat. And there's a lot of them and they're all big. And they are in one of the richest areas in the world. Nevada is only second to South America, Chile and Argentina. And the news we're going to look at today talks about just how rich it is. So N-I-L-I-F. She finished the day at 81.3 cents with just about 4% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB, which we like to refer to as the better tier because you have to audit your financials to be here. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy than the banks. And they've got all the green ticks again. Verified profile and transfer agent and ta-da, penny stock exempt. I really do like seeing that. So I've already told you what this company does. Let's take a look at the relative volume. Well, she had a little increase today, jumping from 190,000 to 215,000. It's not a lot of extra shares, but she's making good use of them. She is climbing. Share structure for Surge Battery Metals. Outstanding share count, 148 million. Insiders, looks like they got about 19 million. If the numbers are correct, we got a float of 130 million. Nope, that's not a low float either. But it isn't bothering the gains, right? They keep on a coming. Financials, we got nothing here. Not on the annual, not on the quarterly, not for any lithium company except ALB. Nobody has gotten the right to start mining yet. Disclosures for the company, we got zip over here. So let's jump on over to that news. So I am going back here to June of this year. 
Surge closes second tranche of private placement for an additional $1.8 million out of a total of 7.1. So they're getting to draw off of this $7.1 million. They've already taken 3.6. So they've got money they have to use. They tell us here in June, they increased the size of the Nevada North Lithium Project. But then they tell us in July that Surge Battery Metals announced they increased it by 100%. They doubled the size of it. It was also in July that they started drilling in the Nevada North Lithium Project. And then we have a piece of news that came out yesterday. Surge announces highest grade lithium assays to date with up to 8,070 parts per million lithium in the first 2023 hole at Nevada North. Folks, I was just reading the other day. First off, you have to have at least 100 parts per million to even be considered a source of lithium. Surge Metals was looking for property that had at least 1,000 parts per million. They had a very strong test, which got them interested at 3,000 parts per million. And now we are up to 8,000 parts per million. Folks, this is super rich lithium. This is what people are going to want for their batteries. So it is hot news and the charts are hot, even though they're not making any revenues and there's not any real catalysts out there yet. The chart is running. Let me show you what I got. It's actually pretty straightforward. This is N-I-L-I-F, Surge Battery Metals. That's a six-month, four-hour view. There's that low bubble she hit back in March of 14.7 cents. She started climbing off of that, bouncing off of the top, only coming close to the bottom once. And from that point, she just didn't stop climbing. She crossed the center, jumped out the other day, and right now she is hitting a high of 86 cents, starting off down here at 14 cents. Volume has gotten very strong these last 10 days, and our oscillators are all going to the moon. Everything is up or hot. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So this is our channel in here. She was screeching across the bottom here before she started her run, and it looks like she's paying most of her heed to the 20-day SMA. She's coming down to it, and she's even starting to pull away from it. All of our SMAs are lined up beautifully, nice and close, not too far away, and our 200-day SMA is turning up. Oscillators, well, believe it or not, they're all coming down. Look at our PPO coming down. MACD is underneath and coming down, and our RSI is falling at 57. Does the chart look like that to you? It almost looks like a divergence. A divergence is when your tools, your oscillators are doing the opposite thing of the chart, which means there's normally a change of direction, a reversal that's about to come. I don't know. Let's take a look at that five-day, five-minute view. All right, she's getting some roll on here. I'll tell you what. She was at 62 cents here, ran up to 80 cents, fell back down to the 200 at 70 cents, jumped to 86, fell back to her 200. You can definitely see she is respecting the 200. So that means you can count on it when it's coming down. If you sold up here, you may want to buy back in here because she normally bounces off of that. Right now, she's floating on her 50-day SMA, not even paying any heed to that 200. Though the 200 is rolling around. It's actually looking like it's starting to come down, and the chart just doesn't look like that to me. Oscillators, they say she's coming down too at this very moment. I think N-I-L-I-F has got more going on than the chart saying. Now she's running, she's gotten a lot of land, she's got very rich samplings, so everything looks good, but nothing's happening yet. Maybe you're just getting yourself a position for when it does. The last thing I want to bring up to you is these big lithium mining companies in America are being approached by major corporations automobile companies, battery manufacturers, and they're giving them lots of money. One company just got 650 bucks from General Motors. Another company got 700 bucks from the uh, Department of Energy. So the company could be approached with a lot of money for someone who wants to lock in their supply. N-I-L-I-F, lithium mining. It's just starting. <laughs> nice variety of stocks there, right? Lithium cannabis and technology. All of them have hot charts. 
All of them have catalysts. I've given you enough information to make you interested, show you they have potential, but they still need some more due diligence. Now, before I let you go, I want to ask you a question. What do you think of the hat? No, not if you like it or not. Everybody's got opinions. I'm wondering, is it too big for a video or did it just need a feather? <laughs> I appreciate your time, folks. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.